Okay, welcome to uh, another diversion diversion from Ride and Die. Die? Ride or Die. I, be, I was corrected by Tracy yesterday. It's Ride or Die. I should actually know my own logo. Um, so uh, today we're going to do uh, another solo adventure. And as you can probably see from the screen here, it is based on the game Labyrinth, which I've got here. So this is a uh, pretty simple role-playing game uh, based obviously on the, the 1980s Jim Henson movie starring Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie. Um, uh, and everything you need to play is basically just in this one book. There's no other expansions. So um, you can probably get a good two or three playthroughs of this game. So I think that's probably a good thrill in evenings. Um, fun sort of light-hearted role-playing based around the, the world of Labyrinth and so I've got our, our bard um, M but today she's going to be Sarah turn back Sarah turn back before it's all too late <laughs> I just want my brother back <laughs> you're supposed to go you got you, you got to be very what do we say was it your your petulant 16 year old it's not it's fair, not fair. <laughs> you can be running through the rain with your dog. Um, there's David Bowie singing underground in the background. So, yes, yeah, so this is a, a very um, uh, rules light. In fact, there's virtually no rules, so it's it's incredibly rules light. Um, I'm a big fan That's of rules light systems. I have difficulty following rules. Yeah, yeah. So, we're going to. Uh, so, in this game, you can play multiple different types of well there's at least uh, four or five different types of races or whatever you want to do you can you can play a dwarf so like in hoggle from the movie you could play uh, a goblin you could play a worm um you could play uh, what i call them a horned beast which is like ludo uh, from the movie uh, <laughs> like a worm what do i just hello hello hello, <laughs> hello? Don't go that way! Never go that way! Go right the way to the castle! Okay. <laughs> so you can play a worm, and you can play a, a knight of yore, which is like Sir uh, um, So, uh, but for, for authenticity, we're going to have... Uh, M is playing Sarah the human, and she is trying to save her brother that was abducted by the Goblin King. <laughs> so um, we have to create your character. Uh, so your character is incredibly simple to, to uh, create because there are no no stats essentially. There's no like in other games where you roll for your strength and and everything else. Uh, all you do is you pick whatever race you are going to be. So that would be dwarf, goblin, human, fiery beast were um, and then once you picked your uh, race then you then uh, choose two things one is um, uh, something you're good at and something you're bad at and uh, basically those though depending on what you choose that can either give you a, a positive or a negative on a particular test or challenge that you're trying to do so now you can either try and do this from your own personal experience or you could do it from your uh, uh, imaginary character so um, it says here step three what is something you're great at so what is your character excel at or is particular has a particular talent in and so if you're a human you can pick an extra trait as well so you're going to get to have two traits um, I did email you a character sheet M, but you probably didn't get it but it doesn't really matter no, I, I have it I have it I've got it in front of me oh there you go so uh, if you're a human, so you get two traits, so you, that you can be good at lifting and pushing, so obviously that means you're physically strong. Singing and dancing, there you go, so if you want to bring out your vaudeville, or vaudeville um, tap shoes and all that, you can do that. Sneaking and hiding, uh, listening and spotting, uh, endurance and bravery, and running and jumping. Uh, wait, so if, when you say I can pick two things I'm good at, 
does it come in those pairs or can I pick two two pairs? You can pick two pairs. So yeah. like lifting and pushing is just is one is one uh, talent. Singing, dancing is, a, is another talent. So anything if you're if you're theatrical or performative, um, you could go for that one. Sneaking and hiding, um, uh, uh, obviously that will make you. If you have to sneak past someone, that's going to obviously give you a benefit. Listening and spotting, um, perception, I guess some sort of perception sort of trait. Uh, endurance and bravery, so you know, stamina and willpower and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then running and jumping is kind of like an agility. Uh, All right, I know, I know exactly what I want. I want um, was it hide, sneaking and hiding? Definitely yep. sneaking and hiding. Yes. And let's go endurance and bravery. Cool. All right. So make a note of that on your sheet or piece of paper that you have in front of you. Uh, yes, I definitely have paper in front of me. Um, <laughs> I have digital paper in front of me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still old school. I like to do things with bits of paper. So, um, I do too, but I, I don't have any of that paper right now. I have to get up. Uh, endurance and bravery. All right, stop. Okay, I'll make a note of it as well in case I forget. Endurance. And so after you've taken your positive, then we have, and what was the other sneaking and hiding? Now we have to do a negative. So sometimes actually a negative can actually be a positive depending on the situation um, and vice versa. So something you are bad at, uh, if you could be blunt, so it's basically someone who's not, who is, can be a bit rude or negative or tac tactless. Uh, forgetful, um, uh, cowardly, which I suppose if you've got endurance and bravery, you're probably not gonna pick that cowardly. Uh, naive. I'm so naive. Yes. It's just not fair. This says me. <laughs> and uh, overconfident. <laughs> Over oh, you could be overconfident. Maybe that's maybe that's your um your negative. Ooh, is overconfident a flaw? It's a flaw. Yep. And oh. uh, selfish is another one. Um, you can actually um. You cannot come up, you can actually in this rules, if, if you're not happy with any of these categories, you can make up your own one. Um, uh, selfish, because selfish fits with the character as well, I think. She's like, it's my time, I don't want to babysit my brother. Like, yeah. Quite, yeah, we'll go with selfish. Okay, cool. All right, so it fits selfish. So these are sort of your little um, role playing. Um, Okay, so I think that's pretty much the character. Okay. Now, uh, yep. along the way, you may be able to pick up equipment, things to help you with different challenges. Um, uh, you can carry up to six items. Um, no more than that. Uh, I think that's all we need to create the character. So, uh, any questions before we move on? Let's do this. Cool. So, uh, yes. So, okay. So, what does it, so? I mean, this game you can play with multiple players. So, obviously, we're just trying to see how we go with you just by yourself, which is kind of like the movie. Um, you may encounter non-player characters that may decide to join you on your quest or not, just like in the movie. Um, so, uh, Okay, so, all right, here we go. So, okay, all right, I'll just a little bit about the mechanic. The mechanics are really simple. Um, if you've got a challenge, something you have to, you know, that there's a possibility that you could pass or fail, uh, you'll do a dice roll, which will be a D6 roll, and you'll be looking for it to beat a target number. And the target number is depending on uh, the degree of difficulty. So something that's uh, a piece of cake, as, as it's, you know, described in the film uh, that would be a two or higher uh, uh, not a not quite a piece of cake is three it doesn't look that hard is four fairly tricky is five and it's not fair is six so Wait, what would be a six? Do I have to equal it? you have to equal it yeah yeah so you have to equal or beat that number um, so uh, so obviously yeah the lower the number the easier it is now if you have uh, a trait that should give you an assistance with that um, challenge. 
So, for example, you had to jump across a, a, a chasm or a ravine or some sort of thing. Uh, then, obviously, uh, having that uh, running and jumping uh, trait would give you a get you to roll two dice, and, and then you take the best roll. If, on the other hand, because you're selfish, if there's something that comes across that um, the fact that you're selfish makes it harder for you to to pass then you would roll two dice and you take the the lower number oh. i think that's correct isn't it uh, yep that's right yeah so so it's 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 like advantage and disadvantage is what they generally refer to that so you, you roll two dice take the best number or roll two dice take the lower number um if you've got npcs uh they may be able to assist you to um uh do something um, so if there's two people trying to move something, then obviously it'll be easier. So if you got if you're trying to push something heavy, uh, it might be a four, for example. But if you've got two people pushing it, then it drops down to a three. If you've got three people pushing, it drops down to a two, and so on. So teamwork helps you um, do it do challenges easier. Uh, and like I said, your yeah, equipment you can carry up to six items. Um, uh, if you if you've got more than six, you have to drop something. Or, or give it to someone else in your group. Um, okay. Uh, just double checking about equipment. And so, also, um, if you've got some equipment that can help you with a challenge, then that could be like a like a trait as well. So that could be a case where you can, if you need to climb somewhere and you've got or climb down somewhere and you've got some rope, obviously that's going to make it a lot easier. Then you can get to roll two dice and take the higher result. Okay. So that's pretty much the the, the extent of the rules. It's, it's like I said, it's it's very 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 simple. Um, uh, so it's, the game is more about um, uh, problem solving and role playing and, and so on. Uh, you will there will be some situations where it's an action scene. So I won't I won't really say a combat situation because this game isn't really a combat sort of focused game. Um, but in an, an action situation, um, uh, you're still going to do the same sort of tests. Um, uh, for example, here, what is this? Okay, um, there's some goblins. Uh, you can describe basically what you want to do, and then you you can just say, okay, that's. I'll give it a difficulty number. Say you want to push over a goblin, or one of you wants to hide behind, uh, crouch down behind a goblin. When you push him, and he falls over the back of your friend. Then there's a difficulty dice rolling. You can just you can just roll um, roll the dice based on that difficulty. Um, It's it's just really that the, it's the, 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 it's broken down into into actions like every five five seconds or so like a, a round uh, when you're doing a, a combat or action action sequence. But most of the time it'll be like a puzzle puzzle um, solving. So I think that is all we need to talk on. So we can go through uh, the start of the game and. I will bring up Okay, so here we go. That's coming up, there you go. So just like in the movie you you were saying I wish you'd um, take come and take away the um my brother right now and the goblins say did he hurt you yes he did and they come and get it and the goblins are coming got him <laughs> that goblin voice way too good oh uh, this is really in my wheelhouse um, <laughs> I know I know all the voices <laughs> did he say it come and say come on goblins take him right now it's not hard is it <laughs> so okay so all that happens you did your running through the rain you did the argument with the the the, the stepmother uh and then uh you uh got frustrated with um what was the boy's name 
Toby. Toby. Yes, which was his real name in real life. It was. Yes, he was actually the son of Brian Froud. That's right. I thought, uh, yeah, I thought he was related to Jim Henson. No, he's the, the, the Brian Froud who did all the art art design yeah. and everything. It was it was his son, um, uh, and he and how now he's a, he's fully grown now and he's a, he's actually an artist himself. Um, I'd be worried he wasn't fully grown. Yeah, well, maybe he turned into a goblin. I don't know. <laughs> maybe he won't be fully grown. Maybe you won't be able to save him. Maybe maybe he will end up as a as a as a goblin. Goblins. Maybe I'll just decide to marry the Goblin King and be the Goblin Queen forever. Yeah, that, that, that might be a way to go. <laughs> well, uh, okay, so there, you are against the clock here because, um, uh, as as it as it's um, said in the um, in the movie, you have thirteen hours to solve the labyrinth, or your little brother. Will be here forever or whatever. <laughs> Isn't it like, um, or your brother will become one of us? Yes, yeah, something like that. <laughs> we have to be. We'll have to be very careful. If we, we'll be, we'll be um, quoting the movie too much. We'll actually get done for copyright infringement. <laughs> okay, we're an unnamed magic maze game with uh, Ziggy Stardust starring in the role of. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, um, uh, uh, M has gone to uh, great l lengths to make sure that she's dressed appropriately for this show, uh, trying to look as much as possible like like Je a very very young Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> uh, I, on the other hand, could never even attempt to uh, emulate David Bowie, so I won't even try. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so here we are. So, um, we will go to the first scene. So, you, you've walked down to the labyrinth. So, this game is all about, um, there are notable scenes where you do uh, different actions. Um, in between each scene, it's assumed that you are walking through the maze and so on. And trying to, trying to find your way through it. Um, so, we come to the first first room the gatekeepers okay so dawn the labyrinth is spread out before you crawling over the hills surrounding the goblin king, king's castle descending the slope you are confronted by a wall beyond which lies the labyrinth's first ring the maze of stone corridors you glimpse from the hilltop a square stone lined pond filled with brackish water lies nearby so that would be uh, that's that's this. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, no openings or, or, or gates can be seen. No footprints mark the sandy earth. Okay. And then as you as you approach the wall, uh, you know you hear two voices call out to you. And uh, you see um, there's actually two creatures outside the wall. One is a very short uh, human humanoid creature, um, kind of possibly looks like a dwarf. Um, and the other one is a very large, furry, hairy creature with, with horns. And um, as, as they um, uh, approach you, uh, they, 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 they're sort of waiting, waiting for you as you as you approach. Uh, well, so this is the entrance, isn't it? This is the entrance. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, I would like to go up to these creatures. They look relatively friendly, and I am rather brave, so I'd like to approach them and tell them that I am looking for my brother and can they show me the way to the castle please or point out the way to the castle yeah um, so uh, the first the, the short humanoid the dwarf um, he sort of walks up and he's got a bit of a waddle and he goes my name is Gloam 
You want to get into the labyrinth, do you? And the other one, and the big, the big hairy one, the big one, sort of, sort of squats down and doesn't really like moving very much, and talks very slowly. Says, "My name is Loma." Well, it's nice to meet the both of you. Can you show me how to get to the castle, please? So, um, Gloom, uh, the dwarf goes. No, I think you should go in this door, and, she, and he points to. Um, To this one, he points over here. And says, I, I, "I, you, you should, you should, um, do the smart thing and go in this door." And then Loma points at this door and goes, "No, you should do the wise thing. Go in this door." But how do I know which one of you is right? Only one of you can be right. <laughs> And Glove goes, oh, but it's, oh, it's, this is much, much better door. Much better door. Um, uh, this is the smart way. If I was smart, and I'm definitely smart, everyone tells me I'm smart. And if I was smart, I would say go in this door. Oh, hang on. And Loam is going, don't listen to him. This is the do the wise thing. Go in this door. <laughs> well, each of you needs to tell me where those doors lead. Oh, they lead into the labyrinth, obviously. But where into the labyrinth? Into the into where into the labyrinth? Well, into the passages and into the tunnels and things like that. <laughs> So does one go to a tunnel and one goes to a passage? They go to, they go to, the labyrinth goes everywhere. There are passages and tunnels. You need to keep your wits about you in the labyrinth. <laughs> Can I stand on something to see over the top of the wall? Uh, no, the wall's pretty, pretty high. Um, you can't see, you can't see over it. Um, you, I mean, you, I mean, you could possibly try and climb up onto the um, the edge of the of the pond. There's like a. a That's what I was thinking. Is there like a little ledge or something that I can stand on to see over the top? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you could you could try stand, standing on that. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll if you'll um, uh, see, but you could try. Okay, can I do that and see if I can see anything? Okay, so. Um, as you stand on the edge of the uh, pond, you try and see if you can look over the walls, um, yeah. but the walls are, are still too high. But um, when you're standing there, you do notice something catches your eye inside the pool. All right, can I get down off the ledge and look closer at whatever's glimmering in the pool? Uh, yes, yes. So you can do that. And then... Um, Okay, so you see a, a sort of metallic item. Is it a key? Well, you have to reach in to grab it. And you see something, uh, you see a, a very long, long, long item. Is it a tentacle? No, no, it doesn't look like, it doesn't, it's not moving or anything like that. So you could, you could. You could... I didn't say there was a key or something, it was like a tentacle and something that was going to be old Lord of the Rings and something. <laughs> thing was going to like come out and grab me. Um, all right, can I inspect the item in the pool further? And is it within my reach? Can I grab it? Yeah, so you, so you reach down into the water and your hand touches something hard and cold. And when you pull it out, it's a what appears to be a sort of metal. When you look at it, it's like a, it's a periscope. <gasps> <laughs> Good, yes. Let's grab that. Let's grab that. And is it long enough for me to now look over the wall? And you find the other item. I said there was two items. <gasps> the other item, again, is also hard, but not. It's it's it feels more a bit more organic. And as you pull it, it, it comes it comes out, and it's like wooden. And then you keep pulling and pulling, and it comes out, and it's it's a long pole. 
It's about six foot long. What am I going to do with a long pole? <laughs> Prod things with it. I don't know. <laughs> Use it as a pole vault. It's about it's about six foot tall. So it's all of it. It's all of it. Letting was part of my good train. So okay. I'm going to pole vault over the wall. Um, all right. I'm going to put the pole down for a second, and I want to do two things at this point. One is. I, well, first of all, is there a difference between the two doors like, that I can see? Okay, so uh, Loma, who is the, the big horned, yeah. horned creature, it's a, a carved sort of stone door but overgrown with moss and there's um, scenes sort of in relief on the stone uh, around the door of creatures, plants and, uh, and things and sort of people merrymaking around the door. Um, the, the dwarf's door, um, Gloam, uh, it's an old wooden door with rusty metal and then uh, around the door is again carved into the stone and all that are uh, devices and puzzles and, and, and architecture. There's like cogs and, and um, levers and, and cantilevers and all this sort of, sort of mechanical looking uh, motif sort of etched into the, carved into the stone. Over where each door is with my periscope. Uh, okay, so so the periscope is obviously good for looking over the top of things. Um, uh, you can't see over the door because the door is in the wall. Well, like over the wall at that part, like where the door is. Okay, um, so looking up that, when you look, you can actually just see over just over the top of the. Um, of the wall of the labyrinth but you, pretty much all you can see is just the tops of the maze as it stretches off as far as oh, the eye can okay. see and so loma, loma loma is going well you should really do this fool this is the wise choice and globe's going don't listen to her you got to pick you got to pick my door and Lump's going no 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 my door is best all right Yeah, you can carry up to six items, so you've got... Um, I can't pick a pole with me! Just look at the carrying a pole! I love RPGs! He's carrying the worst things! I, I, a wooden pole, when you're when you're adventuring in Dungeon Dragons, is, is, is one of the most useful things you can have. Because you can, you can, you can prod, you can prod things which look dangerous. Yeah, make sure you don't get caught by traps. You can use it to get across gaps and things. They're, they're incredibly useful. <laughs> Probably things that set look dangerous sounds an awful lot, lot like social media. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so I've got a pole and a periscope. And look, cogs and mechanical things versus people merrymaking. All right, let's go with the merrymaking. Let's go with Loma's door. Okay. Door number, door number two. Let's go behind. Let's go. And, and so when, when you step, when you say, uh, okay, you're choosing door, uh, Loma's door, Loma goes, well, that's delightful. You chose the Maya's door. And then Gloma's going, don't, don't. You win again, Loma. Loma's going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Door chosen. Does it open is the next thing? Uh, yes, so it opens. <laughs> Big stone door opens out. Uh, and now, uh, as we mentioned at the start, you have 13 hours to retrieve your brother Toby, or um, he's, he's turned forever into a goblin. So uh, you are against the clock in this game, okay? Okay. Uh, so uh, now... What happens when you uh, uh, move, move, move your way through the, the um, through the labyrinth? Uh, there's a whole series of encounters, but it's kind of randomised a bit. So I need you to roll a d6. Okay. Six. Oh, 
Oh, that's great. You rolled a one. Okay. Um, it's not good or good or bad. It's oh. just well, actually, not necessarily. No, actually, no. Higher numbers are better um, because you move. You're moving through the labyrinth quicker. Um, I'm just double checking, but there's no. Yep, that's okay. So you rolled a one, which takes. Okay, so <laughs> all right, you're gonna like this. So as you walk through the door, uh, the ground beneath you disappears, and then tumbling hard, your world becomes darkness as the sound of rock closes above you. God, I'm in the only end already. I don't know how I'm doing that. <laughs> You're in an Obliet. <laughs> How did I know this was going to So, uh, the, so the, 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 it's, the sound of rock closes above you. There is nothing but the panting of your breath and the beat of your heart. Cold stone meets every touch of the walls and floor. You are in an Obliet, a place where people and things are put to be forgotten. <laughs> Bad move, bad move. Alright, so I'm looking around and I've, I've still got my pole and I've still got my periscope. Yes. Are there any discernible doors or windows or any floors in the walls? Is there so, anything that I can see that is like a discrepancy? Uh, so you can see, uh, you, this, is the, this is the room, this is the obelet that you can see. Okay. It's a coffee table, there's some chairs, I can see that. Yep. Um, uh, okay, so the room is is, is quite quite messy, um, but uh, uh, there is um, you can see these little alcoves in the, in, in the different areas around. So you can you can do some exploring, and there does appear to be uh, a, a, a table. So there's there's two sort of um, when you when you you so you when you walk over to this area here, uh, there's there's like a, a, a it's like a board games there. There's like a, a chess board with a, a, a chess set, and sitting on the two comfy chairs are a pair of white skeletons. They seem to have, they seem to have been in the middle of a game before they died of old age, and so the skeletons have got like long beards reaching down and touching the floor. It's not foreshadowing at all. <laughs> all right. Well, I am brave, and I am going to go over there and investigate if there's anything useful that I can find on either the skeletons or on the chessboard. Okay. Um, so, uh, you start looking, the chessboard looks like a, a, a regular, um, uh, chessboard, um, and, uh, but when you touch the skeletons, they suddenly come to life. New friends, new friends. Hi, I'm Sarah. Is there a way out of this room? There you go. That's, that's the wrong move. You did the wrong move. And the other skeleton goes, no, I didn't. This is a correct move. You didn't know the rules. I know the rules. You didn't do it right. Roll didn't do it again. Take it back. Take it back. But who are you? I'm Sarah, and I'm looking for my brother, Toby. Can you show me the way out of this obliet, please? Please. Can I you see we're playing a game? It's very important. Everything depends on us playing this game. Well, I'll help. I'm really good at chess. I'm going to help you finish the game. And if I do that, can you show me the way out of the room? We don't... Out of the room? What do you mean? Out of this open you know, chest. You know the rules of chess? I do. What does this little horsey thing do? That's a knight. Here, no, it's not a one. knight. It's not a... I told you it's not a knight. What did you think it was? I don't know. It's not a knight. <laughs> it's a horsey. Everyone calls it a horsey. Well, I will show you what to do with the horsey. And then when we finish the game, you can show me how to get out of here. Um, so the, 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 skele the skeletons, they, keep, they kind of just keep bickering. So, okay. 
I don't know what she's talking about. Do you know what she's talking about? I don't know. Oh, you know, it's your move. No, it's not my move. It's your move. So they just... They, 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 What's that other thing next to them? Well, another table or something. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, all right. So you, you can um, try searching around. Um, Okay, so when you okay, so uh, in in the obelette, um, uh, time passes passes quickly, and uh, you ser you you're searching around into the room, and you find uh, two pieces of brass, like metallic. They're kind of like a uh, half circles. Okay. Um, so you lose an hour searching so you know only got 12 hours to go this is terrible you told me <laughs> told you racing you're racing against the clock oh, oh, this is terrible all right right have i okay so i'm searching the room i found these two brass half circles i'm taking them with me wait do i know what they do or can i sort of tell from looking at them what they do they just they just appear to be um i mean they're, they're, they're reasonably large they're probably I don't know, maybe half a meter or whatever. They're, they're quite large pieces See, of brass. It's smaller than a half meter brass circle. How many pockets? I know I've got pockets, but how big are my pockets? <laughs> they got you're carrying this stuff. <laughs> Can I look like I'm walking out of, you know, the self-help section in Ikea by the end of this campaign? Yeah. It's like a flat pack or two. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so they're, 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 they're sort of like, yeah, they're two halves of what appears, if you put, yeah, that they, they make like a, a metal circle. Um, what happens when I join this circle together? Can I join them? Do they make a door? Do they make a door somewhere if I join them together on the wall? Are they magical? I don't know, you have to try. <gasps> well, first of all, when I searched, spent an hour searching the room, Yes. Have I found anything else apart from the skeleton, the chessboard, and the half circle thing? Uh, you can you can search again, but you'll probably lose another hour. <laughs> I don't want to search again. That's terrible. Um. All right. Uh. Okay. Right. Think. 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 So I haven't found any doors or windows. Is that right? There's nothing else. Uh, when you go to these, um, these, are you going to check out these alcoves? <laughs> well, you got distracted by the skeletons bickering. Oh my god! <laughs> Can I, like, I looked at them for half an hour, and then I looked at the other places. So when you, when you when you look at the alcoves, you actually look up, and they're actually round holes, and they kind of lead upwards to the um, top of the ubiquette. Oh! Oh! Okay. Think, think, think. What have I got? I've got. So each of them is a round hole. Yeah, so basically, you can, when you're standing there, you can look up and there's a, there's a hole. How high is each hole above me? Are they different heights or are they all kind of similar heights? Um, all you can kind of see is it sort of goes upwards and then there's uh, like a, a bit of light uh, indicating that um, uh, possibly a way out. Wait, but like how high above? Like, can I reach up and like pull you, myself you, you, up? You can try climbing up, yeah. Right, I've got a pole, I've got these round things. Can I wedge the half round things in the side of the wall? So, I have a plan, I have a plan. Can I get the pole, wedge it at an oblique angle, and as I go, can I like jam these metal things in like, I don't know, the stonework so I can use them as leverage up through the thingy? Uh, yeah, and then start, start to climb up. Yes! Okay. Uh, Okay, you'll need to, it's a difficulty of three. Oh my god, okay, fine. Let's do this. Uh, uh, and you haven't got any abilities, I think, that would benefit this because you're just sneaking and, and hiding and endurance and bravery. So just a standard three or higher. Oh wow, okay. Pressure's on, pressure's on, come on. 
come on, Dress, you can do this. Roll D6. <laughs> This is terrible! Okay, so you start to try to climb up, but the, the wall seems to be a, a little bit slippery and you slide back down. That was not fair. It's not, not fair. fair! It's not fair! <laughs> and you haven't even got a grumpy dwarf to come and show you the way out of the Ubilea. Um, and the skeletons are still there. Yeah, they just sort of, they've seen, they've settled, they've settled down and they just look like they've fallen back asleep. Okay. Oh, the chessboard! Can I stand on that? How tall? Wait, there's a table and a chessboard. I'm going to stack them up and climb out of this place. You want to drag, drag them over and try and climb yeah. up again? Yeah. Okay. You can do that. Um, I might look at a periscope, but I might stack them up, stand on them. Have a look out of the hole with a periscope, because I don't know what's out there. Okay. Uh, again, you need to roll a, a, a target of three. Oh my god. So you drag those tables over and stack them up on each other. Oh, and then try and oh. climb up. Let's go. Yeah! Okay, so you climb up on that, and then you seem to get... Um, uh, purchase on the walls and you start climbing up and climbing up and looking at the hole and you keep climbing and you, you, you just it doesn't seem to be getting any closer and you keep trying to climb and it's just and it's just never getting any closer can I stick the periscope over the top and have a look now though no, you can't. It just that, that it seems to be always eternally out of your grasp. You keep trying to climb up and up, and you don't. And then when you look down, you notice that you actually haven't climbed very far at all. You're only just a little bit above where the table and the chair is, even though, even though it feels like you've been climbing up. Not fair. <laughs> and this is with the furniture stacked. Like I've got the table, like the two tables yeah, yeah, stacked. Yep. 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 <laughs> what about the other hole? So that was just one alcove. What about the other alcove? Okay, when you go to the other alcoves, you look up and it's the same sort of thing. You can look up, you can see a little uh, glimmer of light from, uh, from above. Um, but it, to all intents and purposes, it looks the same as the other, the other place, other alcoves. Oh, how my way up. <laughs> um, can't my eyelashes out. <laughs> no, there's no one to flip the head. <laughs> Your whoopingly wiles of a 16 year old girl. <laughs> can't do this to anyone. Um, <laughs> oh man. Um, Alright, so I'm in an oubliette. Let's just, re let's just recap, gentle, gentle viewers. Uh, I'm in an oubliette. I've now lost an hour fapping around. Uh, there are two skeletons there. I've stacked up the chessboard and the table in one of the alcoves, and I can't climb my way out of there. Um, can I dig my way out of there? Are there any? Is there anything on the floor that would be helpful? Uh, it's it's messy and dirty and all that, but basically it's 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 stone. Okay, it's stone. Oh, okay. Looking at the map to see if there's anything that'll help me. So you got your pole, you got your periscope, and you got two half circled brass rings. Okay, stuff it. Can I put the rings up against the wall because it might be magical and try and open them as doors? That just sounds really weird. Like, are, so, they, are, so, they, are, they, are they solid? Are they solid? These half circle things? No, they're, they're basically. Um, like, but they, when you basically, if you put them together, they would form, they'd form a ring. Can I put it together as a ring on the floor and see if that opens a portal, or uh, against the wall and see if that? Opens? Yep, you can do that. Okay, so you um, you put the, the two halves of the rings together on on the um, uh, on the ground 
Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a hole appears. Which you can, which you can, which you can jump down into. Uh, bye, skeletons. Have fun with your game. <laughs> so you jump, you jump down into the hole. Roll a d6, please. This will be interesting. Okay, so as you, um, uh, you fall through that hole, it takes you, you, you come out of the hole and you're back inside the maze. So you are actually, you're inside the labyrinth now. Yay! Okay, and you start walking along and you find a hole in the wall. It's, it's like someone's taken a sledgehammer and just kept smashing their way through the wall as they walked forward. So this is it's just roughly hewn um, like a like a tunnel through the wall. Um, uh, but it's not breaking. It hasn't seemed to have broken through the wall. It's just sort of forming a, a tunnel um, uh, and a naturally long tunnel through the brickwork. And... Um, uh, when you go and when you enter into the tunnel it, it ends with a, a red door with um, a round red door and there are six hands protruding from it at eye level and as you approach they form a face awesome. welcome to the hole in the wall Hole in the wall. May I pass through, please? I'm looking for my brother. He was taken by the Goblin King. Okay. Um. Okay, you went through. You went through Loma's door, didn't you? I did. Okay. And he goes, Oh, you are friends of Loma! I am! You are our honored guest! And okay, so what happens is um, the door opens and you enter. Oh, there it is. The hole in the wall. Welcome to everyone. Here is Sarah, our honored guest. And as you were, it's it's a pub. It's, it's yes. like a, it's like a tavern. Oh, I love this game. Yes. Wait, wait. What is the the legal drinking age in the labyrinth? Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I am in fact what sixteen. <laughs> yes, yes, you are sixteen. Yes. Um, okay, so the room is full with ra raucous sounds of patrons singing and arguing and drinking, and you can see fairies flow flying around. There's a cluster of fairies. On a little table in a the corner, there is, seems to be like a couple of worms um, talking at you. And then there's there's goblins in the room conversing with dwarves and so on. And there's people milling about and they're grabbing drink. drink. And then every so often, um, one of the floor tiles sort of flips up like this. And this little guy gets out and, goes, rah, 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 and he flicks the, 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 the tile back over and drops back down in the hole. And then on the walls are... Helping hands and people's and they're holding uh, people's hoods and their cloaks and their things like that. Uh, uh, and um, uh, uh, and as you come in, everyone sort of looks at you and go, oh, "The honoured guest!" And they're all really happy. And 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 the the, the, the dwarf woke up to shake, woke up to you and they shake your hands. And the goblins go, "Ah, oh, you're welcome, welcome." Hi, everyone. Uh Welcome. I am Sarah, as you know, and uh, I'm just wondering if one of you might be able to wait. Oh, we lost the audio. Have to say that again. We lost your audio then. Oh, I was just saying, I'm Sarah, which I think you 
Kimono and uh, nice to meet you. Can uh, one of you please point me out to where I might find your king? I think he might have uh, my little brother Toby. And uh, when you mention the goblin king, they all go, "He's not here, is he?" Uh, <gasps> this is a, this is a safe refuge where we all can we all can uh, code code habit <laughs> peacefully and a drink and be merry. No, no, he's not here, and I promise I won't tell a soul, but can someone show me the way, or at least tell me which way to go to go and save my brother, please? Okay, so your first thing you... you uh... Drinks are on me. <laughs> okay, the first person we catch you use at your eye is a pig wearing a dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crossing with the Muppets or something. Oh wait, it's Jim Henson! It's Jim Henson! <laughs> Hi there, it's Miss Piggy! <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Is Kermit in here as well? Hey, hey, here. hey here, it's Kermit the Frog here. And welcome to the Hole in the Wall! <laughs> Alright, okay, uh, Kermit can show me the way then. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, hi, Miss Piggy. Um, I don't know if you know your way around the labyrinth, but I see the little boy. Um, he's my brother Toby, and I think the Goblin King has him. And I'm just trying to save him, please. You're talking to the to the pig. I'm talking to the pig. Oh, okay, the pig goes. Um, uh, no, I haven't seen. I haven't seen the Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> have some food. Have some food. <laughs> have some drink. Be merry. Uh, <laughs> I have enough Greek myths about accepting food in the underground, and I am not going to eat or drink anything in this place. <laughs> I, know, I, I know my Persephone myths, thank you. Mm. I will not be accepting any food or drink. Thanks, Eves. Um, uh, uh, as, you, as you're talking, uh, 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 you, you feel someone tugging on your 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 sleeve. And you look down, and it's this dwarf. And he goes, uh, "Hello, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Dugar the Dwarf. Um, I, I was wondering if you may be able to uh, assist me." I'm in a bit of a hurry. I'm trying to save my brother, but what do you need help with? Um, 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 um. I, 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 I need my calculator. I need it for all my calculations. You see. Calculators are good for calculating. Um, and it was stolen by some other dwarves, a gang of dwarves. Uh, uh, if you could uh, 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 retrieve the calculator for me, that would help me greatly. Do you know how to get to the castle? And if I help you find your calculator, can you take me to my brother? Um, uh, I, I could probably help you some other way. How far is some of the way? I only have 12 hours. Um, uh, I, 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 I can show you where, where, what would the, where, where, where I know of the labyrinth, what, 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 what parts of the labyrinth I'm, I'm, I know of. Uh, but I, but I really need my calculator to get to, to sort out my, um, my calculations. What are you calculating? Uh, calculations. I'm calculating, calculating. <laughs> Where are these other dwarves? And wait, are these other dwarves on the way to the castle? Uh, yeah, yes, all paths lead to the castle eventually. So eventually sounds like a very long time. And I don't have a long time. I don't have forever. I know it's only forever. <laughs> we are so getting sued, aren't we? <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, let's look here. So, um, uh, will you agree to help Dugar? Um, it's, not, it's not Dugar, it's Dagmar. Sorry, Dagmar. Get the name right, Neil. Um, uh, do you agree to help Dagmar in finding his calculator so he can do his calculating? You know what? I'm a tender heart, so yes, I'm going to help you. Actually, no, I'm selfish. No, I'm selfish. I'm selfish. No, I'm not because I have to find my brother. 
<laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, Dagmar, but I have to find my brother. If you help me find my brother, I'll. How about we do it like this? We get my brother back first, and then I help you get your calculator back. I promise. Dagmar goes. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll come with you as far as I can. Thank you. And then I promise when I have my brother back, we'll find your calculator. Okay. Uh, so I can do my calculating? So you can do your calculating. Okay. Excellent. I like calculating. Um, okay. So, uh, so do you want him to, to leave the tavern now? or? Yes. Is there anything else that I can like take with me from the tavern that... I can like take or that I can buy that I can see. And do I have money to buy anything? No, you don't have any any money. No. You were magically transported to the Goblin Land with no reviable currency. <laughs> I don't accept Avex. No, sorry, no. <laughs> Not fair. Although, because you are honored guest, um, you you do have you, you are given some some food and drink. No, no. Um, yeah, everyone just seems to be really just um, busy merry making and drinking and, and eating and singing. Okay. Eating and singing. Right. Um, okay, I'll just. So the only thing that I've actually got is the food and drink that they gave me then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing else. And everyone, everyone's friendly to, friendly to you, yeah. Okay. Thanks, friends. Can anyone else help us? So Dagmar and I are going to go and try and save my brother. Is there, is there anyone else who has any information about the castle or can help me on my way, please? I'll return the favour. <laughs> uh, 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 someone else that catches your eye is a goblin. And, he, and he's, 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 he's quite... He's kind of like wearing a, a pin pinstripe suit, and he has like a, a, a fedora hat on his head, and looks at him and goes, "What is it, Toots? What seems to be the issue? <laughs> Are you in? Uh, do you need a private dick to <laughs> to help you out? <laughs> I'm a detective. I'm sixteen. A private detective. <laughs> private dick." <laughs> Okay, this PGA ra PG rating's just gone out the wall. <laughs> All right, Sarah's lost it. <laughs> What's up, Trots? <clears throat> so <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. My brother Toby. He's been taken by the Goblin King, and I'm trying to find him. Oh, Dad okay. Goblin just stay, stay, slow down, slow down. Let me take these notes. Just, just, just a fax, ma'am. Just a fax. And he's just, just, just scripting. Okay, boy, Toby. Can you describe Toby for me? Um, he's he's like less than two. I think he's like eighteen months, and he's really little. How many and arms does he have? How many what? How many arms does he have? Big nose, like a goblin. Babies, 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 babies. Not familiar with babies. It's a little person. To you, he would look like a little goblin. <gasps> okay, little goblin called Toby. Where and where is where is little goblin? I think he's with the Goblin King, sir. Oh, gob oh, go oh, Goblin King. Oh, okay. Oh, tricky, 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 tricky. Ah. Uh, Gonna cost more. Mm, tricky job, Goblin King. Mm. Well, how much? I don't have much on me, sir. I can pay you after I get my brother back, and you can take anything we find. Well, part of it you can take as a reward if you help us. Hmm. Tricky job. Tricky job. Mm. Well, Toots, I think you've hired yourself a detective. What was your name, good sir? Uh, Humphrey. 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 Humphr
Humphrey. Well, thank you, Humphrey. Sir Humphrey. You can come with us. And you can help me get my brother Toby back. He must be so scared. And it's all my fault. Okay, all your fault. Yes, okay. Definitely your fault. Okay. Uh, I solved the case. It's your fault. Can you show us part of the way to the Goblin King? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Tips his hat and goes, definitely torch I can help out. Um, all right. So, uh, are you going to, you're going to leave the, um, the tavern or keep moving? Is there anyone else there that's caught my eye or that wants to come and help us or anyone that can provide a map? At this point, I'm pretty much just standing in the middle of the, the pub going, I really need a lot of help to find my brother. This is all my fault. I have to get my brother back. Um, everyone sort of goes, uh, some people, um, most people are just ignoring you and just drinking now. A couple of people are going, oh, that's so sad. Um, and, but, I need but, time to move on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got two helpers. I think now's the time to go. So we should set out. We've got some food and drink. I've got my giant pole and a private dick. <laughs> <laughs> Two things which are not related. <laughs> okay, roll a d6. <laughs> roll, roll a d6. Well, one's not, not the best. <laughs> okay. Have you rigged this? Did you rig this game? No. Okay. okay. So you leave the hole in the wall and carry on through uh, the quest. Cool. While we're doing that, in about 10 minutes, I just need to make a quick call if we can just pause for a bit and you can edit this bit and keep going after. Yep, 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 yep. That, that'll, give, that'll give me a chance to get a, get, uh, get a go of coffee as well. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. Get coffee. I just have to make a few work calls. That's so you might. So you and Dagmar the dwarf and Humphrey the goblin detective. Um, I'll continue down through the uh, the, the passageways of the labyrinth. Um, Dagmar the dwarf has got like a bo book of like tables that he's sort of flicking through and looking up and then looking through flicking through the different sort of tables of logarithms and all this sort of thing uh meanwhile humphrey the the goblin is um he's got his notebook open and he's um making notes and then occasionally he pulls out out of his little uh, out of his out of his jacket he pulls out a little hip flask and takes a little snip and then puts it back in and keeps on going um and then you come to a, a pass a part of the passage and the passage is littered with fuses and kegs of gunpowder, what appears to be gunpowder, and sticks of what appear to be dynamite. I'm taking the dynamite with me. Move. And there's a crew of, you see, a, a five goblins, and they're in this sort of, in this, in this area here. And they're um, uh, scurrying around and they're tossing explosives to each other and back and forth but they're all carrying like lit torches <laughs> and they're attaching the explosives to the walls and things um, like a really oh -S compliant move okay and and so yeah so they were just piling them there <laughs> Put him over here, put him over here. No, no, you can put explosives go here. No, what's this thing do? And he's holding up a, some gunpowder and he's got his torch lit right next to it and he's like, you know. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go and get my All right, so yeah, so they, they, they don't, they're not really paying attention to it. They're just too, they're all sort of fussing around. Saying, Come on, the, the, this, the, this has to be demolished. This, this, this passage is getting demolished. The Goblin King de de demands it to be demolished. And so they, they're all, oh, this is like, oh, 
Dim rats, it doesn't go like this. You put the explosive this way. And they, they don't really look like they know what they're doing. But they, they're handling these explosives and they've got torches, flaming torches around. And, and uh, it's just, yeah. It's not going to die, okay? <laughs> wow, that was a quick game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It blew up, yeah. Uh, and they're blocking the passage. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm gonna stand back so that I don't die in the inevitable explosion that's about to come, and I'm gonna call out to them, and I'm gonna say, "Guys, I don't. I think you should get those torches away from the kaboomy things. Can you do that? Can you? Can okay, you one one of the goblins goes. Fire? Everyone! Everyone! Stop! Stop! And he's wearing like a high vis vest. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? Yeah. And he goes, All right, this is very important for everyone. This is to me, as I tell you. Listen to her. Everyone, stop what you're doing and listen to her. Everything will be all right. Everyone. <laughs> Good. Hi, everyone. I am Sarah, and these are my friends, Humphrey and Dagmar. And we need to get through this tunnel. One of the goblins runs up to you and goes, oh, 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 I don't like explosives. Oh, God. Oh, I think we're all going to die. Well, that's good. You can stand behind me, little one. But I need all of your friends who are holding the torches to take a big step back from all of the other things because they can go kaboom. And we don't want things to go kaboom. So everyone holding a torch, I want you to stand against the other wall and I want the people not holding torches to put all the other things to one side. Okay, can you do that for me? Okay, everyone, do what she says. You guys go over there, you go over there. Oh, but I'm really nervous, I don't want to do it. And then another goblin comes up to you and he's got like three barrels of gunpowder. He goes, look like a juggle. And he tries to do it like this. And then they, they drop and there's gunpowder spray onto the floor. And, and then got another goblin's looking at it with torches going, oh! Well, okay. Humphrey just need to get down the other end. We need to like run past these guys and they, they can do all the kablooey that they want, but we need to go before this place blows and the ceiling comes down on us. So I'm just going to tell them one last time, guys, torches to one side, kablooey things to the other side, okay? Kablooey, kablooey, kablooey. So, yeah, so they all start sk 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 scattering around and but they, uh, they, they seem to have some semblance of paying attention to what you're doing okay, so cool, they start cool. some of them start moving the kegs over but then another one comes over picks up the keg and puts it on the side of the the uh the the fire and then the other one and then but uh, yeah they eventually start to sort of separate the explosives from the people with the torches <laughs> everyone okay good thank you now in the future fire and kaboomy things will be do not go together, okay? Okay, good. Bye! <laughs> and we're going to make our way as fast as we can down the other side of that hallway before something goes kaboom. <laughs> and I'm going to grab some dynamite on the way and stuff that in my bag as well. Oh, okay. So you're going to try and steal some dynamite or something? Well, I'm going to ask them first. I'm going to try and ask them and say, by the way, do you think we could just borrow some of this? No, it's very important that we blow up this thing with all of the explosives here. What are you trying to blow up? The passageway. Oh, okay. I'm taking this dynamite and I'm making a run for it. <laughs> uh, I want you to roll a d6. Oh my and, God. and I want you, because you're good at sneaking and. Yes. Whatever. Yes. Um, I'm gonna get, I give you a plus one. Okay. So, uh, okay, you went through Loma's door. Okay. Oh my god, does the door make a difference? Oh, the door makes a difference! No! <laughs> I should have known. Okay. Okay, so you need to roll uh, two or higher. And you get a plus one because of your good at sneaking and hiding. Oh, that's good. If I get a plus, which means I can beat this, right? Like, yeah. Or you can, or you can, or you I can. I needed that plus one <laughs> to get a two on <laughs> Yeah, because you could have accidentally blown yourself up. Um, oh. 
Okay, so you're able to grab um, some of the explosives, and I will tell you what you grabbed. Uh, oh, okay. On, on, on the um, on the uh, it's explosive, it's not like a, a, a stick of dynamite. It's, it's got the word "days" are written across the side of it. So it's so it basically. I mean, all right. Okay, so we're back, and. Uh, you you navigate your way past the, the goblins as they seem to be um, finding some sort of semblance of organization um, and then as you come around the corner your you encounter uh, four creatures sort of sitting around in a group um, and they, they're, they're dwarves and you can see them they're, 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 their attention is focused on something and and um, uh, they're, they're holding something in their hand, and and Dagmar goes, oh, "They got my calculator!" <gasps> the guys in the calculator. All right. Well, can I go up and so wait? Do these people also have dynamite and fire? That's kind of dangerous. No, they they seem to be just sort of they seem to be like calculating away, and then they sort of talking to each other and sort of. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it plus five or plus ten? I don't know. You should know. All my characters start to sound the same. Um, <laughs> uh, so yes, so they 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 say they're focused on this um this little calculator thing, which kind of looks like a combination of a, a regular digital calculator, but there's a slide rule attachment part to it, and then there's like a a, a roll of um of of uh, a roll of paper that comes out the top too, so when they click on a button, little, little, it rolls out and little numbers get spat out on their paper. It's a funny looking sort of calculator. Sounds useful. Sounds like we should get it back. Mm. Um, hello there, gentlemen. My name is Sarah, and I think you have something there that belongs to one of my friends here. And they look up to you and go, oh, no, and they, they, they sort of hide it behind themselves. Oh, no, no, nothing here. Nothing. Nothing. I think you're hiding it behind your back. No, and one passes the other and turns around and I was thinking, look, no, nothing. Nothing. And the other goblin sort of look. Are these people small enough that I can pick them up by the scruff of the neck? Yeah, they're dwarves. Well, I'm going to pick up the one that's hiding it and I'm going to demand that he give it back to us. You! You have my friend Dagmar's calculator, and you will hand it back over this instant. He's going, no, 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 put me down, put me down, no. Don't oh, let me go. It's just very down. degrading for a dwarf to be picked up like this. I don't like being human handled. Well, if you don't want to be human handled, then you're going to give back his calculator. That doesn't belong to you. And, so, and, and, and he's going, and look, and one of the other goblins is going, uh, not goblins. Dwarf is is sort of sort of just he's got the calculator. And you can see him sort of just sort of trying to shuffle out, shuffle away slowly. Where do you think you're going there? I oh, dropped oh. the one and folding and grab the other one. Oh, right. And his little feet. Give me little... that calculator now. Okay, uh, roll a d six, please. Um, I think you're looking for a target of three. Actually, Dag Dagmar's coming along and he's going, Give me, give me, it's mine, it's mine, give me my, my calculator. Yeah, six. How you like that, goblins? Dwarves. Dwarves? <laughs> Very, yeah, yeah, don't, don't goblin shame them. <laughs> don't don't miss species them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so the, 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 the guy's like, ah! And he's, 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 you're trying to grab the, um, you're holding him up like this, and you're trying to grab the, the calculator, and he's sort of going. Uh, 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 uh. Dagmar, grab the calculator. I've got this one. And so Dagmar comes over, and he's sort of jumping up, and he's sort of, and, he, and he's like, and he pulls it down, and he goes, I got it, I got it, I got it. And so he See, walks. Uh, that, that wasn't that difficult, was it, gentlemen? And they all go, No, oh, it's not fair. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. We stole that fair and square. That's our property. 
does not make something your property, ask the British Museum. <laughs> Ooh, political. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag no with bubbles, hashtag give them back to Greece. <laughs> The views of uh, M do, are not endorsed by this channel. <laughs> Complaints to M at Dresden Doll. <laughs> you've just you've just left the country too, so your visa may be revoked if you ever try to return. Oh no! It's, it has to stay in. Definitely has to stay in. It's all going in. It's all going in. It's all good quality. It's all content. It's all content. Um, all right. So you, you're able to um, uh, retrieve the calculator and give it back to Dagmar. Who uh, then the the, 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 the goblins um, uh, sort of grumpily and oh, goblins. I, I'm doing it now. Uh, the dwarves sort of grumpily sort of wander off, um, bickering amongst themselves. Um, and Dagmar's, you know, he's just he's just there, and you can see him. He's already t -t 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 typing in, pushing buttons in his calculator. Okay, so cool. Okay, so that means we jump through to. <laughs> okay. So after you. Um, After you uh, leave the uh, uh, dwarves, uh, you come to So you, you make your way a bit further through the, um, uh, the, the the stone walls of the maze. Like yeah, all the, the whole maze is basically like the image behind me. It's all the stone stone walls. Um, a cheerful buzz fills the air, and you hear high pitched voices are, are humming and chatting. And as you as you move ahead, the passage ahead is blocked by a, a dense sort of miniature city growing out of the walls and you can see that it's populated by several hundred brightly colored worms dozens of tiny bridges span the divide creating an impossible tangle so, around around here um, as, as you approach the whole colony goes silent so you hear all this <laughs> and then as one they all you see all these little heads of these little worms and they all sort of turn to look to you and it's all they've all gone silent as they see you approach they glow is it like those glow worm caves you can go in <laughs> and so one of the, one of the um worms okay can i talk to them okay one uh you you, you walk up and you go hello and then one of the dwarves, uh, not dwarves, <laughs> getting them all mixed up. Uh, one of the little worms looks up and he's got like a little top hat and he's got a, a little um, uh, uh, mustache, twirly sort of mustache on his on his upper lip. Uh, 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 and he goes, uh, Hello, uh, my name is Henry. Uh, uh, I, uh, I am organizing the construction uh, of uh, uh, the, the the stage free expansion of Worm Colony, um, we will have a suspension bridge here, followed by a railway line and a kiosk with a buffet, and uh, we will also have uh, all, all of the uh, uh, machinery here for all of our amenities of the colony. Can you assist us with that? Will you please let us pass through as well? 
or can you show us a different way to get around? I don't want to destroy your colony, Henry Cavill the Worm, but... <laughs> Oh, uh, well, yeah, no, we, I, I, well, we, we can't, we, we, all these bridges are here, we, we, we need these to get across, it's very good for the economy to have e equal passage of, of worm kind. We crawl underneath your bridges, Sir Worm. I don't want to, I don't want to have to destroy it, but I really must get through. Time is running out and I need to save my brother. So, can you show us a different way, or can we somehow crawl under your bridges? Okay. Uh, you went through Loma's door, didn't you? I did. You mm. keep saying that. It has a very threatening aura, sir. <laughs> you keep saying, oh, you went through this door. Um, so the, 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 the worms go, oh, um, you're a friend of Loma. Is that correct? I am, yes. Oh, oh well, then we should be able to assist you. Uh, I will all, I ask the worm engineers to retract the bridges so that you may pass through safely. Thank you, Henry. Okay. And you might want to reinforce your buttresses over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That makes it pretty easy. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, uh, the little Henry walks over and he, you, see, you see him conferring quietly with a, uh, another uh, worm engineer. And then you hear him, oh, raise the bridges, raise the bridges, raise the bridges. And it all passes down through the voice, raise the bridges, raise the bridges, raise the bridges. And then you start to hear this sort of um, whirring sound and <laughs> ratchet sort of sounds. And um, the, the, the little bridges, which are all around here, they sort of start. You see little worms scurrying down, yeah. And and um, after after a few minutes of um, more of this sort of whirring sounds, the bridges sort of lift up, and it leaves a, a passage for you to pass through. And as you pass through, all the worms start cheering. And they go, Yay! Go, Sarah! Go! Yay! And then they start. They start. They start throwing worm confetti, uh, and and like little poppers. And psh, little poppers. I love it. Tracy would love this. She loves talking about small animals. <laughs> You're over this. And and so they 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 um yeah they're cheering yay yay, <laughs> and and you're actually able to pass through um quite uneventfully. Uh, roll a d6, please. Did you roll a six? No. Four. It rolled a, a. What did you roll? I don't know. I'm rolling it now. Ah. Oh. You rolled a one. I love it. I'm either one or six. Like there's no in between. <laughs> Wait. Oh, no. It's like a metaphor for the way I live. Really. All, all or nothing. The all or nothing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What is that thing? I'm getting concerned. There's a giant thing in a puddle there. Okay, so you're moving, you, you pass through the worm colony and you, you come into a large chamber and the ground beneath you sort of starts to tremble. And around the bench, uh, you hear a voice uh, and like, like, you know, this big, deep, resonant voice. And, a gr and, and the sound of like grinding, like massive continents are grinding together. What have we here? A trespasser? No, a friend. Hi, I'm Sarah. And you see this big, giant, st stone giant right here. And he's sort of buried up to his waist in the earth of this sort of paved courtyard. Um, and inside one hand, you can see he's holding up like a cage. And there's a trembling figure inside the cage. Um, and 
and around and around on the ground there are other cages like here and here these are all these are all sort of you know iron cages and you see inside a few of them you actually see um, skeletons inside them What's that? Who's in the cage that he's holding? Okay. Um, all right, okay. So it goes, Hey, trespassers! I know I put keep trespassers as prisoners. Where's my cage? Where's another cage? I need another cage for the prisoners. And then inside the, the cage, You see, uh, okay, so. <laughs> okay, so there's actually two people inside um, um, one that one is sort of dressed. I mean, they're, 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 there's two, there's two human humanoid type characters in this cage. One, um, is wearing kind of regal looking robes and the other one seems to be wearing these old multicolored clothes with some of a funny sort of hat with little bells on the end of it. Okay. Um, and all the other cages, are, uh, there's no one alive in any of the other cages? No, no. They're, they're scattered around um, uh, and like I said, four, four of them have like skeletons lying in them. Um, can I use my big pole? Behind, be, behind, sorry, before you move on, behind the giants it, here yeah. is is kind of like a, is an exit. I need to keep going that way. I need to get around him, basically. Yes. Okay. May we pass, Mr. Giant? No one can pass. You will become my prisoners. Well, that's not a very nice thing to do. No wonder you don't have any friends. You don't take friends as prisoners. But if I don't have prisoners, who would I talk to? If you don't take people as prisoners, then we can still be your friends. Are you trapped? It looks like you're trapped. If you promise to stop keeping people... I think you have to keep keeping people as prisoners because you're trapped in the ground there. Is that right? And you have no one else to talk to. Oh... Uh, what? Well, yes, I suppose so. So if I freed you from where you're trapped, then you wouldn't have to keep making other people trapped because you could just go and make friends. And then you would have people to talk to. Hmm. No, I think I'll stay here. I like my prisoners. And then um, in the cage, the, 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 the taller of the two, the one that's got the regal clothing, said, uh, 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 hello, uh, uh, um, uh, d don't mind me. Uh, my name is uh, King Jasper. Uh, please please um, don't try to save me. Um, I'm... I'm I'm quite okay. You can go on without me. And then the, the little uh, jester-like character goes, Don't listen to him! Save us! Please save us! Save me! Save me! Oh, um, wow, Remember, you've also got Dagmar and Humphrey with you. Take them instead. <laughs> <laughs> exchange. Prisoner exchange. <laughs> uh, it's getting very political. Stolen ancient artifacts of prisoner exchange. Here we go. That's it. I don't know. I was about to say, this game is turning into some sort of metaphor. Um... <laughs> And, and, you know, ceilings that I can't break through and 
<laughs> socio-political commentary. Um, <laughs> it's a bit deep for me. All right, 12 o'clock on a Saturday. Uh, wow, okay. Um, time is running. Uh, okay, just... Oh, um, all right. Will you, you can keep your prisoners there. Will you let us pass? No, you're going to be my prisoner. I don't want to be your prisoner. Is there anything we can give you in exchange so that we can pass? Exchange? Hmm. Yeah. What do you propose for exchange? An exchange for what? Well, if we let you, well, if you let us pass now, I will come back and be your prisoner later. That sounds a bit like a trick. I wouldn't trick you, Sir Giant. Would I trick you? I don't know you. But you could. We could be friends when I come back after I save my brother. No, I think you're going to stay. We be all be. You can keep me company. I like the conversation. Oh, I'm a very. I'm a very good conversationalist. I bet you are. I can tell. But how about you come with us, and then we can have conversation the whole way. Um, what would you exchange then? What do you have to exchange for me to let you pass? You can have. This magic stick. No, you can't have my stick. No, you can't have my stick. Uh, I have this lovely mead from the hole in the wall. You can have this mead. It's very delicious. I'm made of stone. I don't need food. Can what, what, I? What, what, what is that in your hand? It's shiny. Circle thing? No, they're gone because when you went came out the Uber they 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 disappeared. Do you want the what else do I have? Oh! 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 oh. I know what I can do. I can throw my days at and run past him! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's just double check on that, what that does. What? Okay, you want to try and do that, do you? You want to f to throw your flash bomb? Yes, I want to flash him. Well, flash bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you want to flash him, okay. Wow! <laughs> Some of the more of that collarbone you've heard about. Okay, so um, so that's the plan. What about the the prisoners? Um, can I throw the flash bomb? Dagmar grabs the well, Dagmar or Humphrey grabs the cage as we run past. Okay, all right. So um, you going so okay. So the plan is to f throw the flash bomb. Yes. Hopefully, that will blind the giant. Yeah. And then exit past the giant, and you want Humphrey and Dagmar to try and release King Jasper and his jester. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, uh, the, the locks on these cages look fairly substantial. It would take some bit of strength to try and break them open if you don't have a key. Can we look for a key before, while I'm talking to this giant, can one of my companions be looking for a key? Okay, so um, as, as you, you're talking to the, to the giant, uh, Humphrey and Dagmar are looking around, but they can't see any key. I feel like I might have to just sacrifice the prisoners at this point. 
like after I rescue my brother, I can always come back and try and rescue these guys. Like I, I feel like decisions have to be made. It's like time is running out, and I don't want to waste more time trying to free. Like I feel fifty percent bad, right? Because one guy wants to stay there and the other one doesn't. So I only feel like fifty percent bad, and I am pretty selfish, and I am running out of time. And honestly, I feel like. I would waste more time trying to get them out of the cage. So at this point, I just need to, like, I don't even know how far the castle is from here. Yeah. So I feel like I need to, to get, All right. get them out of here. So, uh, okay, so the flat, the, the, the little dazer has like a, a like a, like a, a pin that you pull out and then you can just, you can just choose, choose to throw it. Yes. Well, I can, th- can I throw it at the cage? Because when it blows, it might blow the door off the cage. Two birds with one stone. Don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's 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 not a it's it's it's, it's a flash off. it's a flash of light. It's not like an explosive charge. Well, I'm throwing the light at the stone giant. Okay. So, um, all right. So you do that. You pull out the pin. You throw it. Um, make sure you close your eyes. You, you, and. Um, it goes flash, and there's a big flash, and it goes, oh, my eyes. Oh, my eyes. and you see him, he sort of, he drops the, um, the, the, the cage, and the cage goes crashing to the floor, and King Jasper's like, ow, and we, the, 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 the cage sort of <laughs> falls open a little bit, and you can see a bit of a gap, uh, and, and Humphrey and Dagmar are going, I can't see either, I can't see as well. Okay, I grab Dagmar and Humphrey, which I can still sort of see, and I tuck the cage under one arm, and we. Uh, it's, it's 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 too it's too big to um for okay, you to carry. See, you're you're on your own, fellas. Okay, we're out of here. Come on, let's go. Okay, you, but um the 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 the, the, the uh, giant is like moving his arms around like this. Try, come here, I catch you and be my we're, prisoner. We're crawling, so because he's like up in the air, we're crawling past him. Okay, you're going to need to roll. Um, uh, okay. I'm good at sneaking, remember? Sneaking past him. Yep, 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 yep. So uh, it's a, a difficulty of three. Um, okay. And you will get, because you've got an advantage, you get to roll 2d6 and choose the best number. Ooh, that's good. All right. Okay, so you, you, you sneak, sneak back, and what were you doing about Dagmar and Humphrey? Because they're also been blinded by the flash. Well, I'm grabbing them. I'm like, just hold on to me, and we're like crawling past this guy while he's flailing in the air. I'm just like, hold on to the back of my vest. Okay, um, that, well, that would have made the whole task of getting past him more difficult. But since you rolled a six, it pretty much means that you you managed to, to get past. So uh, you get past with the 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 the, 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 the giant going. Whoa! God, oh, you God, come back! I'm lonely. Come back! And um, you see that the uh, the cage on the ground is, is open, and you can see Jasper and and um, the jester guys. So they seem to be able to be climbing out themselves through as the cage is kind of twisted as it hit the ground. And Humphrey and Dagmar, have, they're, they're sort of stumbling along behind you because they can't see as well. Um. Okay, roll a d6, please. Ooh, a five. Be better at this. Okay. Okay, here we go. So you, you make your you, you leave the pass where you can hear the, the booming voice of the of the giant in the background. It starts to dissipate as you move further away down down the corridors, the winding corridors. And then you're coming along after a bit longer. You come to. Um, uh, uh, the, co- the corridor that you're in comes to an end 
and it's this it's this room uh, and it, lying on the floor is this gin, ginormous uh, key it's made of a, a huge large key made out of uh, solid brass and then behind it you see um, uh, um, okay you see like a, a keyhole okay. here in the in the far wall to fit the giant key yeah yeah okay the three of us need to lift it up together i think no it's really it's really heavy even the three of you would have trouble lifting it and this is the only way through yep there's nothing else in the room so the the, the, the the key, as you can see in this image here, that it's not like a a regular a regular sort of looking key. It's got um, the teeth of the key are, are quite distinctive, different shapes. Okay. Um. It doesn't help me, does it? Oh, there's nothing else. There's a big key and a keyhole. Yeah. Um, and I've still got, I've got a stick and a periscope and some food, that's all I've got. Here's my flash bar. Stick is not going to help. Is a keyhole big enough for me to crawl through or anyone to crawl through? Uh, so looking at the keyhole, um, uh, the keyhole is 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 um, set in a cylinder, um, and it's um, it's actually it's actually quite large. You would actually be able to climb inside the keyhole, um, but then you would need to push the tumblers up um, in order to have the keyhole sort of turn. Can we all crawl in and can we push various tumblers? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but then you, you'll need to match, I suppose you'll need to match the key. You know, like we're about to start doing the YMCA dance here. Let's <laughs> start practicing. Get information. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I feel like I'm doing Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation or something. I'm trying to match the or like Vogue. I know this is this is turning into interpretive dance hour. This is where my singing and dancing ability would have been really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to come in handy somewhere. Should have picked it. Um, yeah. Can, right. I, can I also use like my periscope to jab certain bits? Can I also like I can use the other two guys with me? Okay. Looking at the key, um, there are shapes of what appear to be like letters in the shapes of the, of the key. So the first letter is like a U. Okay. And then there's two A shapes. Dance our way out of this situation. <laughs> okay, so you'd have to, um, yeah, uh, I guess you'd have to try and interpretatively dance our way out of this situation. Push the shapes into the, the tumblers to make the letters. It's getting very acrobatic right now. <laughs> I don't have to actually do this, do I? Because I don't know that the viewers need to see that. No, no, I think that should, should be fine. Um, my okay, my so so you got uh, yeah Goblin Humphrey, uh, Humphrey the Goblin and Dagmar. Um, so you got three people, and there's three letters that you have to form. Okay, we can do this, guys. I will be the first. You, Humphrey, you're an A. Dagmar, you're an A. And we have to like crawl in and then. Uh, okay, um, you you basically all have to um, form the letter together because it's actually a quite 
large hole. So the three of you would have to form a U, for example. So that you would click the first tumbler and then you could get into the next Oh, tumbler. okay, right guys. Information. <laughs> like, I'm serious. this is turning into Vogue. I love it. Do you guys know how to Vogue? You guys have that in Labyrinth Land, yeah? Okay, we're gonna do that, okay? <laughs> the only way we're gonna get through. <laughs> okay, so uh, how would you form the U? Uh, I will be one limb of the U. One of them needs to do the flat bottom bit of the U and the other person needs to be the other long vertical limb of the U, something like this. Yeah, I mean, they're a lot shorter than you. Okay, they're the two limbs and I'm the lying down bit of the U. Okay, all right. So you lie down there with your kind of your feet up on one side and your hands up on the other side. Yeah, and then, and then they stand on either side of me and yeah. we go. <laughs> okay, so you do that and you kind of shimmy along and then you hear <laughs> a little click and the first tumbler clicks and then you got you, you make it <laughs> you make it past the first one now you have to try and form an a wow oh, okay this is uh, this is this is village people ymca isn't it <laughs> really getting like interpretive okay like we can totally do this like like one of us probably need two people this. like one person like so it's two people like this to each other yeah and then, actually, no, you know what we could do? Two of them, like, face each other at an angle with their arms outstretched and meeting. Yeah. And then like that. And then one person kind of braces themselves in the middle of the two to make, like, the, the bar of the A. Yeah. Okay. It's getting very Cirque du Soleil for my liking, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, if we, uh, I don't know. If, uh, so, if we're drawing on a piece of paper. Uh... <laughs> we need a diagram of this. I, I, are you like are you like this? If I'm doing this right, hang on, like that. Is that, is that PG rated? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that position is called. I don't. I don't think I've seen it in the Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, focus now, focus now, Sarah. Your, 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 your brother is going to be turned into a goblin if you can't focus. <laughs> All right. Focus. Anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> so facing each other with their hands. Like... <laughs> 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 oh, to Toby had it. Yeah. I think he's going to be a goblin. I think he's goblin. I think he's, he's destined to be goblin, I reckon. So, facing each other with like their arms outstretched and like their arms, like their hands meeting. Yeah. And then one person like kind of in the middle, kicking their legs on the lap of the other person and their like hands on the lap of like one. Yep. Okay. And then once you're in this sort of whatever position, you roughly in an A shape, you then have to sort of sh shimmy again. <laughs> and you hear the, you hear the tum the tumbler the tumbler click. Yeah, we did it. And then the last the last little and then you have to shimmy along again for the final tumbler. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna click that one. Yeah. And and you click and then. The, sil the, the last tumbler clicks, and then uh, you hear the big creaking sound, and the door, the, 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 the keyhole sort of opens up. Yes. <laughs> then you can untangle yourselves from each other, and <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> it, it, retrieve the keys from the glass bowl, and. <laughs> Roll a d6. Oh my god. I wasn't meant to bring the horny bard into this game. Wow. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
Roll a D6. Roll a D6. Yeah. Doki. Moving, moving swiftly along. <laughs> moving right along now. Um, any coffees in my head? Go. Oh. Okay, so you continue along the, the stone walls, uh -huh. uh, and then you start to hear the the voice of hundreds of voices down the corridor. And then, the voice of hundreds of voices. The voice of a hundred. The voices of a hundred voices. Yes, that's right. Hundreds of voices re re echoing down the corridor as you approach, and then the, the maze opens up into a wide sort of amphitheater, and you can see that the the, the amphitheater is crowded with all the different types of creatures of the labyrinth. You can see dwarves. You can see goblins and fairies and worms and all manners of other strange beasts, and they all seem to be organised into factions. And that are arguing with one another. Okay. And at the front of the platform stands uh, of the amphitheater. There's a there's a massive sort of trumpet, uh, a, a sort of a, a stone horn, and it's about the size of an elephant. It's quite large. And and as you enter it, uh, a, 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 a dwarf. What's that? I go blow it. Uh, as you enter the amphitheater, there is actually a dwarf standing right next to the trumpet and he blows the trumpet into an ear-splitting ear blast and then the whole place suddenly goes they all stop talking and they all go silent the guests have arrived let us hear what they have to say for themselves my best uh, King okay and then you actually you start to see that you know, okay you see some people um from uh who you've met previously you see uh the, the four dwarves that stole the calculator you see um uh, the pig in the dress you see a the delegation of worms with henry henry the industrialist worm with his butt, little top hat and his little mustache um you realize i'm imagining a worm with henry Cavill's face on it at this point right <laughs> Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't getting a Henry Cavill vibe from that worm. I was getting more like a, more like a fat controller from Thomas the Tank Engine for the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, there are different like uh, these large, trolley like creatures are sort of keeping the, the, the keeping the crowd sort of separated from each other. Um, uh, and so uh, the people are going. Why? What are? What? 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 What are, what are you? Why are you causing these disturbances in the, in our in our maze? Uh, I Sarah. I look. I'm I'm so sorry to be a bother, but um, you see, the Goblin King has taken my little brother, and uh, it's kind of my fault. And I really need to get him back, and I'm running out of time. So, yeah, I will help sort out all of the disturbances after I get my brother back. And I'd be really glad if you can all point me on my way and I'll get out of your hair. And I promise I'll come back to sort out your calculators and your blowing up tunnels and your prisoners in cages. I really just need to get my brother yeah, because um, um, one of the characters goes, Yeah, you, you, you blew up that passage and, and, and wrecked the maze. We had to walk for miles to get round the other side because you blew up the passage. I did not blow up the passage. That was, that was a stitch. And, 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 and you, 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 you poisoned the, the, the mead at the hole, hole in the wall and everyone got stomach ache. I am being set up by the Goblin King. He is like a toxic alpha male, okay? I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but like, he is absolutely, and I'm pretty sure he subscribes to like those alpha male channels on social media. But he's a bit of an incel, and yeah, I don't. I I, I think he's setting me up here, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 suddenly you, you hear you hear a voice, and it's like carries through, and it's this voice of the stone giant. 
She wouldn't talk to me and she made me blind. Insult! What have I told you? Look at this guy. And he, she let my prisoners go. <laughs> what was that? She let my prisoners go. Yeah, well, you shouldn't imprison people. It's not very nice, is it? Okay. Um, so the, 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 the dwarf that's beside you that blew the trumpet um, uh, says, We should have a vote whether or not they allow to pass through the labyrinth. Yeah, yeah, have a vote. If they fail, they shall be sent to the oubliette. Oh, not again, you lot. Blimey. Okay. Been there, done that. Next. All right, so. The words of Ariana Grande, thank you. Okay, so um, they're going to have to um, Okay, so uh, they're going to have a vote to see if you can continue uh, And which door did you go through again? Okay, so uh, Lomas is good when social interaction so it, 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 it helps in this situation Okay. Um, okay, so you'll need to roll two dice, uh, and you can take the, the higher roll, and you will need... Okay, how many enemies did you make during the, uh, your adventures? You made an enemies with those dwarves that stole the calculator you made enemies of the stone giant what else did you make enemies of <laughs> British Museum British Museum yes <laughs> uh, you didn't you didn't make an, an enemy of the hole in war you didn't make an enemy of the um, goblins no um, all the skeletons all the in the all the worms all the worms no that's true that's true okay so you will need a two or better since okay. you only made two enemies and you get to roll twice. Uh, okay. There Thank you, you go. Very much. Okay. Um, so uh, you get to uh, roll um, a d6. So fly like a D6. And so you pass through this tunnel here, out through the amphitheater, and the crowd is sort of applauding and clapping as you move through and you come through this passageway here. And as you come out, you, you, you exit the stone walls and then you enter a new area of the, lab, of the labyrinth and it's uh, green hedges. And it's a green hedge maze. How much further I have to go? No, not this stage. But you notice that as you leave the uh, the stone walls and you enter the green pitch, you turn back, and Dagmar the dwarf and Humphrey the goblin have sort of sat down in the crowd and they're talking to other people. Oh no! Oh heck, um, guys, uh, are you coming? Do you know how to get any further in the hedge part of the maze? Uh, they, they, they. they They've, they're, they're busy talking to other people and they don't hear you. Can I go up and talk to them? Can I ask them if they're coming? No, they seem distracted now. They they, they, they seem to have forgotten about you. You're on, you're on your own again. It's not, I, I, it's not I fair. I've lost two followers. I've been unfollowed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I think at that point we will probably pause because we've completed the first chapter. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> of the labyrinth. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And and so far, only only um, you've only lost one hour of time so far. So the clock's going all right. 
Yeah. You just lost one hour just in the um the skeleton part, the oubliette. Yeah, yeah, but it didn't say anything else about losing more time. So at this point, wow. you're okay. Some challenges can take time off you, um, but so far, you're okay. So the Goblin King would be, you know, I mean, he's busy singing. Dance, 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 baby, dance. <laughs> yeah, that's not creepy at all that he's dancing around with a bunch of children. Yeah, throwing the baby up in the air and catching it. Yeah, so you remind me of Babe. <laughs> <laughs> a babe with the power. <laughs> there is so much that's problematic with this story that we're just going to ignore. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got Goblin King Goblin 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 it's a commercial break, a view from our sponsors. Uh, uh, click to subscribe. Yeah, click, and, click like and subscribe if, if you find us remotely entertaining. Uh, and uh, we will be back soon with another adventure of Sarah in the Labyrinth. Boom, boom, boom.